Hi everyone and welcome! AWS has lots of tools for developers, but it's sometimes hard to tell what does what. So in this video, let me give you a quick overview in slides and tie it into the overall software development process. And then we'll go do some hands-on. The first stage will be your source. This is your code. You need somewhere to write your code, and you can do that in an integrated development environment or IDE called Cloud9. This is a browser-based IDE, so really easy to start using it. You write your code from anywhere that has internet access. AWS also supports other tools like IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code, if you're familiar with those. But the AWS tool is Cloud9. Then you also need to store your code in a source control or a version control repository. In AWS land, this is called Code Commit, which is a private repository powered by the Git technology. This lets you see a history of changes that you made in the code, who made them, and you can also roll back changes and so forth. The next stage is to build and test your code. This means compiling the code, turning it into something that a computer knows how to read, and you can run tests on the code as well to make sure it's functioning as expected. The AWS service here is called Code Build. And then finally, Code Deploy. This is used to push your code out to EC2 instances, or it also works with on-premises servers, which is an important point. Another important point is that the servers must be provisioned ahead of time, so this isn't something like an elastic beanstalk that manages all the infrastructure for you. Now to automate and orchestrate all those pieces, we have Code Pipeline. You can set up a pipeline that will run things from beginning to end. So I write my code, I check it in, and the pipeline can automatically build it and deploy it. So that's the really, really big picture of what the different tools are used for and how they tie together. Now on that last slide, there was a lot going on and I've pulled in a smaller version of the slide here. There's different services that do a lot of different things. And I know you don't know all the details of how they work, but even if you don't know that, I think you can at least imagine that setting up all of these different things and configuring them would be pretty time consuming and tedious, especially if you have to do it for multiple developers. So that's where CodeStar comes in. CodeStar provides a single unified interface where you can set up and work with all of these things here. So you set up a new CodeStar project, select the type of application you want to build, a few other options, and then it goes off and sets up all these other things for you. The way I remember this one is it's sort of a rock star, if you will, of the developer tools. It does everything. Okay, now that we've seen some of the theory, let's go see these tools in action. Here in the console, if you type in developer tools, it pulls up several of the tools that we've talked about. I'll just click into the top one here, code commit. And if you back up the breadcrumb here to developer tools, this is how you can get started with CodeStar. But before we do that, over here on the left, you'll see some of these other tools that we talked about. So say that you wanted to go to code build and get started here and create a project, or you wanted to go to code deploy and get started here and create an application or whatever you need to do. But as I mentioned in the slides, having code start do this for you would be much better. So backing up to developer tools over here on the right, it's saying the best way to get started is with a code star project. So let's do that and create a project. If this is the first time you're setting up a project, you will need an IAM service role. You only have to do this the first time. I've already set mine up, so I'm not getting that message. But if you do get that message, just walk through the prompt and set that up. That'll ensure you have all the right permissions across all the services. Then we can move down to select the project template. There's several to choose from here. I'm going to go with Python and Lambda and say next. For project name, I'll say my first project. Project ID will fill in automatically, but I'm just going to make sure I have a T on the end there. I was getting cut off because I was over that 15 character limit. We'll create a new code commit repository. Again, this is where your code will be stored, and CodeStar will create that for us. We'll go next and create project. This will take a few minutes while everything's being set up for us. And you can actually view the CloudFormation stack up here on the top right, so I'll click on that. In progress, if we look at events, you'll see all the different things that are happening behind the scenes. We've got things for code commit, we've got S3 buckets, we've got roles, and so on. While that's continuing, let's come back here and set up Cloud9. 
Again, this is the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, where you can write and run and debug your code. So set up Cloud9. We'll go with the defaults here. And for environment name, my first environment, and create environment. So that's in progress as well. If we come back over to CloudFormation to see what's going on here, looking at our stack, there's actually two things happening now. So we've got the CodeStar project. This one's actually complete. And then this one here, we've got another one that's spun up around the infrastructure. We'll let that one continue. Coming back to CodeStar, let me just refresh here under Projects. Looks like this one is ready to go. So we'll click into My First Project. And over here on the top right, View Application. If this button is still grayed out for you, there's still things working behind the scenes, so give it just a few more minutes. But View Application, and this brings up a web page that is Hello World. So this is the sample template, our Python template that we were using, and it just says Hello World. So pretty simple. But basically it means that everything got deployed behind the scenes to make this happen. Now let's go take a look at our repository. This is the code commit repository that was set up for us. This is where you're gonna store your code. And you'll also be able to see a history here of what was checked in if you view commits. We just have the one thing right now committed initially by code commit. But as developers are in here updating their code and whatnot, that will all be tracked. Okay, backing up, let's also take a look at our pipeline here. Here you'll see that it's set up all the different services we need for end-to-end -end development. So we've got code commit to store the code like we just saw. We've got code build to build the code. And then for deploy, we're actually using CloudFormation instead of code deploy. This is how our changes get pushed out. Under monitoring, we get metrics around our Lambda function, like how often it was invoked, if there was any errors, the duration, and so on. It might take a few minutes for things to show up here. And then finally, under issues, you can integrate with an external tracking system, such as Jira, if that's what you're using to track bugs and tasks and so on. So you can see that CodeStar does a lot of heavy lifting for you, which is great. It's such a rock star. All right, the last thing I want to show you is the Cloud9 environment. So if we come in here to the IDE tab, that environment finished setting up, we have my first environment. We'll open IDE. And the beauty of Cloud9 is that it's browser-based, so there's nothing to download and install like you might have to do with other IDEs such as Visual Studio or Eclipse or IntelliJ, for example. Over on the left, you'll see the code in our project. And again, this is based on the template that we chose, the Python with Lambda. So index.py, this is where our Hello World is coming from. So our web page over here, Hello World, that's coming from right here. Let me zoom in just a little bit, so that's easier to see. But in here is where you would write and update your code. And it also integrates with the code commit repository that we set up. So if we make a change here, hello world from Amber, let's say, save the change with a control S, and then over here on the left, the source control button, I'm gonna right click on this file and say stage changes. This is an intermediate step required before you commit your changes. I'll enter a comment here of what I did. So updated hello world message. And then I'll hit control enter to commit that change. And then down here on the bottom, I need to change directories CD into my first hyphen project. And then I'll say get push, which will push my changes out. Basically, what we just did was we made a change, we checked it in, and then we pushed it to the code commit repository. But the real magic is that our whole pipeline is going to run again. So if we go back to CodeStar and we look at the pipeline, you'll see that code commit updated succeeded just now. Build is in progress. So right now it's building our changes. And then it'll push down here to deploy. So this was the previous deploy nine minutes ago. So if we refresh, Looks like we're still building. It might take a few minutes. So code build succeeded. And now we're down here to the CloudFormation part. So we've got a change set, which basically tells CloudFormation, hey, you had something out there before, and we're going to change what you had. So that's happening now. We could come into the CloudFormation 
console over here, refresh, and we'll see this update is in progress right now. So it's just one more step after that to complete. And once that's done, we should be able to go back to our web page and see that new hello world message. So I'll give this a few more seconds, pause the video and be right back. All right, we made it all the way through the deploy steps. And if you go into cloud formation, you'll see everything is complete here as well. So that means we should be able to go to our web page that before was just saying hello world. And now if we refresh, our chain should be there. Hello world from Amber. Yay. All right, before we wrap up, let's go tear down our resources because we have a lot of things running now. So in cloud nine, I'll click on the nine here, go to the dashboard. And then from here, just select your environment, the little radio button right here and say, delete, confirm, delete. And then you also need to come into code star. This is what set up the majority of our resources. Go to your list of projects here on the left, select my first project and delete. Type in delete. And then we want to allow CodeStar to delete all of the other project resources. So it did set up a lot of things for us behind the scenes and we want all of those to go away. So delete resources, delete. This will take a little while to do its cleanup work, but that's it. Those are the basics of working with the various developer tools in AWS. If you found it helpful, hit that like button for me and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.